So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about some money saving tips that will help you save a lot of money very fast on a very low income or minimum wage. Now, of course, these are tips that can be used regardless of your financial situation, but let's go ahead and get started. Hey, what is up everyone? My name is Sean. I am a life and finance coach, helping you create financial freedom and living life on your terms. In addition to that, I am an entrepreneur who owns multiple businesses, and I have also done 20 rental properties and property flips. Now, if you are all about financial freedom and living life in your terms, be sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button for me, that little notification bell. This is probably a fantastic channel for you. I will leave some links down to some videos in the description box below. So make sure you check those out after watching this video. Be sure to watch to the very end because not only am I providing tips, but I'm also gonna share a few other things you need to be considering that's really gonna help you exponentiate your savings rate in creating that financial freedom for yourself. So let's get started. Now, when I first moved to LA, I had just graduated college. I was a pre-med student and I decided last minute that I did not want to go to medical school, that it was not a passion of mine. So instead, I decided to move to Los Angeles. Now, when I arrived, I only had $400. I had no job. And so it was really, really challenging trying to figure things out. My first year in LA, I made $19,000. I managed to save about 9,000 of it. And then from there, I slowly began increasing my income, learning about budgeting, personal finance, investing, learning how to grow my income. And over time, I was able to buy rental properties, businesses, build my own coaching program and so on. But I wanna talk about some different strategies and techniques I think will help you save a ton of money while being on a low income. So keep in mind that these strategies and these tips will comprise of two different things. Some are gonna be psychology techniques that you can use to help yourself save money, and then some will be some practical tips. Money is very much an emotional thing as it is a numbers thing, so it's important to be attacking both sides. So the very first tip is make it a rule to never buy today, always buy tomorrow. So the idea behind this is to help refrain yourself from impulse buying. It's important to understand that you know purchases and spending are typically more of an emotional Emotional thing. Now, of course, there's some necessities, like you gotta buy food in order to survive. But for most items that are not absolute necessities, you should make it a rule to always wait at least 24 hours before you actually make a purchase, just to make sure that you actually want the purchase and you really need that item as opposed to just wanting it. I even know people like Oprah, I've heard, has certain rules where she waits like 48 to 72 hours before she makes any large purchases. So all in all, never buy items the same day. Always wait at least until tomorrow or even the day after to make an actual purchase. Research has shown that we don't actually get dopamine hits from actually buying the item we get the dopamine pleasures or the dopamine hits from the anticipation of buying an item so the second tip is if someone were to offer you cash value for that particular item would you take the cash instead of the actual item a lot of times we tend to get really fixated on what we actually want and not how much it costs one of the ways of getting around this is to begin asking yourself if someone were to offer me cash value to not buy this item would I take the cash instead of the item? I find this to be a very, very practical and useful strategy for helping say no to certain items because most of the time when I wanna buy something, I would actually rather have the cash instead of the actual item itself. So the third tip is to start thinking about how many hours you would have to work in order to buy this item or how much time this item is costing you. This is super important because time is a very, very valuable thing and it's one of the only things that we cannot get more of. So let's say you're making $10 an hour and let's say this particular item that you want is a hundred dollars well then you had to start thinking about i would have to work 10 hours in order to purchase this item is this item worth 10 hours of my time we want to make sure that we're utilizing our time doing things that we love and doing things that we enjoy not to work around the clock to buy items that we want right now that we may not use in the next month or two or a year later we also don't want to fall into the habit of trying to keep up with the joneses or buying items to impress people that at the very end of the day don't really care anyways the fourth tip is to transfer the not buying it money into a separate account. You see, one of the challenges with saying no is that we don't typically see how much money we're actually saving by saying no. One of the most practical and visual ways of helping yourself see how much traction you're getting by saying no to certain items is to create a separate account. And every time you have the impulse to buy something or something you really, really want and you say no to, instead of just saying no, immediately transfer the price tag of that item into the separate accounts. And this is gonna help you see very, very quickly how much money is accruing and how much money that you are saving. I find this to be a very, very good motivator and a very good visual way of seeing how much progress you're making and how much that money is actually saving you. 
So the fifth strategy is to think of the future costs or the missed opportunity costs. You see, every time that we make a purchase, it's not just costing us money right now, but it's costing us all kinds of potential gains in the future. One of the strategies that I used to use that really helped me say no to a lot of items and cut back my spending and saving more was looking at how much that money would have been had I invested it and held on to it. So let's do an example. Let's say there's an item that you want to buy that costs $100. Well, what I would do then is I would start looking at, okay, instead of spending that $100, if I took that $100, invested it into an S&P index 500 fund, and it got 10% return on average, and I held on to it for the next 40 years, how much would it be? And you find that it's over $5,000. So not only are you spending that money now, but it's also costing you exponentially more money in the future. So that's one way of also really helping you cut back and not spend the money that you know you don't need to be spending. Tip number six is to make all of your purchases in cash. This is a very, very simple and practical technique, but it really makes a huge difference. And so many studies have shown that when we use a debit card or a credit card, we are actually much more likely to spend more money than we would if we had paid cash for that item. And that's simply because it's so much easier to just swipe a card with numbers in front of you instead of having cash in your hand and having to hand that cash over. So I would highly suggest creating like an envelope system and have a certain amount of cash budgeted towards different areas and make sure that you pay cash for every single purchase. Tip number seven is do no spend day challenges. This is actually something I used to do all the time to really help give myself another boost for saving money. We have to remember that no one likes to feel restricted in life. No one feels motivated by what you can't do, what you can't buy. But if we can reframe it and change the perspective or the approach for how we're doing this, that can completely change the way that we feel. And I do feel that having no spend day challenges makes it more fun because now it becomes a game saying like, hey, is it possible for me to not spend any money today? This can just be a really fun way of changing your strategy and just helping yourself not spend money. Tip number eight, unsubscribe to promotional emails. There is never a more tempting time than to see an item that you've been looking at on sale or on clearance. And while of course it's always best when you buy something, make sure you buy on sale or on clearance, we have to remember that even though you save 20% on that particular item, you would have saved even more money had you not bought the item at all. Having promotional emails coming in all the time about discounts and different things can really kind of create those impulses and those triggers to want to buy certain items. So my suggestion is make sure you unsubscribe from all your promotional emails, make sure that you don't get any offers coming in. And then if you absolutely must make a purchase, then you can go online and see if there's a particular coupon or a sale or a promotion going on at that time. Tip number nine, eat at home more often. This is definitely something that I did for sure. You know, I hardly made any money my first year or two in LA. And so I, I really couldn't afford to eat out hardly at all. Eating at home can save you an insane amount of money. Even going to fast food places can add up quite a bit. Even if you're going and getting those five or $10 meal deals, that can add up a lot over the course of the week. So making sure that you create a strong food budget, eating at home more often can save you a ton of money over the years. So the final tip that I have is make sure that you buy in bulk. Buying in bulk will help you save a ton of money on all kinds of items between your food, household items, and everything like that. So make sure that you are buying large quantities. Now, of course, this means it's gonna have a higher upfront cost, but the total overall cost or the cost of usage is going to drop dramatically, and that's gonna really, really help you save more money. So for me, I found that going to places like Costco, even though there was a membership fee, when I looked at all different items I'd be purchasing and buying in bulk, I found that it was a good value for me. But there are all kinds of grocery stores. There's all kinds of other places that you can go outside of things like Costco or Sam's Club where you can still buy in larger quantities. While it's really, really easy to be in the mindset of what's the cheapest right now, we have to understand too that even though it might be cheaper right now, over the long term, it's probably a lot more expensive. So we want to start switching our mindset to more long-term thinking. Now, keep in mind, if you are doing all these strategies and you're doing them very well, and you still are not saving money or you're not saving as much as you like, then I would say at this point, you need to begin asking yourself, how can I start making more money? You see, this is a major transition that I had in my life where the first few years I became a master at frugality. I was able to save $9,000 only making $19,000 while living in LA. And I have a video of that in the description box below. But my problem was for the first few years, I focused so much on just frugality, I was not also learning to make more money. One of the best ways of getting out of the financial situation, begin saving more, is to learn how to make more money. Now, there's a lot of ways in which you can do it. One of the best ways of doing it is learning a new skill that makes more money per hour. You can start a little side business or a side hustle. You could even change careers or jobs depending on what kind of industry that you are in. 
Remember, you can only cut your budget so much. So it's gonna be very, very important is as you begin to master cutting your budget, you wanna begin asking yourself, how can I make more money? Once I begin doubling and tripling and then quadrupling plus my income, my savings rate skyrocketed and it really helped me start to invest in things like rental properties and passive income streams. And it really helped me create financial freedom for myself. But I hope this video provided a lot of value to you. If it did, be sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell as well. Also be sure to check out some of my other videos if you enjoyed this one. I have all kinds of videos on creating financial freedom, living life on your terms, so be sure to do that. But let's get out there and let's crush it.